Okay, let's talk a little bit about the power of your words. And this may sound funny in terms of spirituality, but we've done a lot of creative visualization and we've talked a lot about uh, statements that you make to yourself and the power of them. And now we've talked about the biology of belief and prayer. And I want to talk a little bit about the power of your words in a spiritual sort of way. There's a Dr. Aimoto, and I sure hope I said that correctly. Emoto, Aimoto, and he talks about drawing symbols or writing words on water that has come from different locations and then freezing them and then looking under the microscope how the crystallizations of the frozen water appear under microscope. And what he discovered, and this is an amazing finding, is that really beautiful words like love, faith, respect, kindness, compassion, health, truth, beautiful words produced really beautiful crystal shapes. And this is, you can look this up, this is easy to look up. And really cruel words created really ugly shapes like evil, hate, anger, destruction, abuse, trauma, that these would create really misshapen and ugly crystallization uh, formations in frozen water crystals. So he would take water from different locations, really polluted water sources, and he just let them grow their own crystals without any words on the bottle or the container and or the petri dish. And he would just see what sort of crystals they would produce. And in the polluted waters, the crystals were not very attractive. In pure water locations, the crystals were very attractive. But here's an even more interesting thing, is that he took some of the words that, he, that were beautiful and put them on the poison toxic water and the crystals would actually be healthier that had the positive words on them than the ones that were either neutral or had negative words on them. Fascinating, right? And the really purified waters, that when they had these really positive words on the bottle, either said to them, or, or written on them, they, they were even more attractive than the crystals that were just not touched by any sort of words. The power of words. Nick Taggart has some fascinating uh, research in, in a lot of her books at, as well, McTaggart. One of the interesting ones was when they put an an isoscope or some sort of scope on a plant to be able to read the rhythms of the plant. And we don't think of plants as being alive. I do, actually. But the, the plant would be in the room, and if the person would think to themselves, oh, I want to just take that plant out of the pot, just throw it away and let it dry up in the heat, they would actually see a, a, a distress signal, what they interpreted as a distress signal, on the oscilloscope. But if the person said, oh, you know, I want to give that some fertilization and some water and some healthy sun today, the plant would actually pick up the thoughts, would pick up the words, would actually pick up the thoughts. Isn't that just amazing? The power of words, the power of thoughts. And you can read more and more and more about this. This is just amazing stuff. On one level and on another level, we know it's true. You and I know that that abuser, that traumatizer used really awful words and it made awful things grow inside of us. Self-doubt, self-hatred, anger, horrible things grew inside of us because that person just groomed with those words. And it doesn't mean that we could use good words for them and it would groom good things, although there's a part that you might have played which actually helped them grow good things inside of them at times. But here's the key. You have to use good words with you that help you. And maybe your style of good words is a little different than someone else's good words. I mean, face it. For some people, the F word is like empowering and other people, it's just cruel, right? So but you have to use words that just make you feel empowered or make you feel good or make you feel like you will heal or make you feel like you will thrive or make you feel like you can create and notice that all these exercises whether we're talking about them in course 1 through 11 or in course 11 specifically where we talk about your power to do self-therapy 
you know, that's your ability to talk good words to yourself is really important. So you want to catch your words that you use to yourself. You're impacting every cell in your body because every cell in your body has water. So at the very least, you're impacting the water in your body. But you're also impacting your psyche and you're impacting your thoughts and your emotions. And all those things are also water-based on a biological level. On an emotional level, absolutely, you're impacting yourself. So think of yourself as creating the words that actually change you. As opposed to using words that make you hate yourself, disempower you, or make you blah. All right, now, so let's go on. That's why I want you to think about the power of prayer. Because the power of prayer may work in part because of creating these wonderful reactions in our biology. Well, let's go beyond that. Maybe these wonderful words not only affects our biology, but affects the biology of what's around us, like it did in those Metagric, uh She didn't do the research, but the, the, the researchers that she describes in her books on plants, you know. Maybe it also affects the air molecules. Maybe it also affects the cosmos. Maybe it also affects angels and entities and gods. Maybe it affects everything that exists. And in that idea, that means we have influence. And we can influence for good or for not. Or we can lose out on an opportunity to influence. But this is empowering. And if you see your words, and I mean words that come in your mind, in your mouth, in your heart, you know, your ideas. It's really more like you, you experience your ideas as impactful. Then suddenly you become a spiritually impactful person because those aren't material things. Those are emotions that come from you. Those are thoughts that come from you. These are not actions. They may lead to wonderful actions, but they're things that you're creating on this ethereal, non-body, formless level of being you. You are manifesting you in this spiritual way. Now, let's just presuppose for a moment there are such things as angels and entities and God and maybe fairies and so forth and so forth. Maybe there really are these entities, but they don't do anything to help us until we ask, until we plead, until we unite with them in the efforts of making life better for ourselves and others. Maybe they don't come around and coalesce for the betterment until they're instructed to do it. Maybe they wait out of respectfulness or maybe they wait out of that they just take instructions and that's what they do. Maybe they don't wait but they don't become present or manifest until we summons them up. And that's white magic and black magic is all about summonsing up the powers, right? I'm not saying you go into magic or witchcraft. I'm not saying that. But I am saying let's learn from the paradigms that are out there. Because those paradigms that are out there might give us an understanding of what goes on that we don't take advantage of. If we decide, oh, it sounds like a bunch of hula hula and not scientific. The thing is, is that statistically, empirically, which is what science is based on, the power of observation and statistical analysis and significance, significance in the comparison of statistics when it doesn't come and when it does come, demonstrates exactly what I'm saying. It's all congruent with what I'm saying. This is coming from that type of statistical analysis of research. I find that pretty exciting. I find that helpful. I find that guiding because it means that those of us that have gone through abuse and trauma know how horrible that experience has groomed things inside of us. But by way of reframing, reforming, reconfiguring, recovering, we can alter that experience and alter our ability to move forward by making sure that we enact our power. And our power is through the words we say to ourselves and others. Our power is through the emotions we feel inside ourselves. 
Our power is our convictions. Our power is our request. Our power is our discernment. Our power is our actions. Our power is our determination. All that determinations, all of it, everything is spiritual in nature. Hmm. So when you read spiritual writings like Rumi in the Muslim, Muslim and Islamic traditions, or when you read about the Four Noble Truths and the way that guides individuals in managing suffering in, in the Buddhist traditions, or when you read the beautiful Psalms of soothing and calming and pleading with God to intervene on behalf of horrible situations, my enemies are in pursuit of me, help me and rescue me, God. That, that King David says in the Psalms of, of the Old Testament, the, the Jewish uh, principal Bibles, the canot, can, 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 canonical writings, or, or when Christ says, does a good father give a son rocks instead of food? No, that I am a good father. My father is a good father. Now, to think of God as a father is probably really a cultural point of view, right? So we can say, my God wishes to give you good things here. I want to give you good things. And that's what Christ is essentially saying. And I, and I want to show this to you. I want to give you healings, he would say. I want to give you miracles so that you know that there are good things out there for you to avail yourself through in a relationship with God. So I'm not advocating any faith. I'm not, I'm not promoting or evangelizing in any respect. I am advocating some spirituality. That spiritual experimentation with yourself and spiritual experimentation with different points of view, but a spiritual connection with a recognition that the majority of what you are may actually not be on a physical level. Hmm. So just think about that. The majority of who you are and, and what you create and how you create moving forward may not actually be on a physical level. Now, for example, in these courses, I have physically put a ton of effort into these courses, a ton of money into getting these courses to you. A, a team of mine has put a ton of their efforts into getting these courses to you. And on that level, this is a very much of a physical labor of love. But you taking these classes is predominantly you experiencing yourself inside yourself. It's a spiritual relationship. That's not a material relationship. You may put it into a material relationship. We'd call it psychological or sociological or philosophical, but it's also metaphysical. It's not spiritual. It's mystical because it is this amazing relationship with you that is interacting with the evils that someone else created in a physical level that you suffered. And now part of your healing is definitely physical, clearly. And I've talked about that in these courses. But it's also on this ethereal or ephemeral or this spiritual level. And so for you to begin to be aware of, I am not just a physical being. I am so much more than that. And for you to ponder, how much more are you in the domain of the non-physical? And how do you create from a non-physical power inside of you, or powers, physical manifestations? Well, some people have said it's through prayer. Other people say it's through the practicing of the law of manifestation or the book of the secrets. Other people say it's just choosing and discerning carefully who you hang out with and what you do. Other people say it's hard work, and I would say yes to all of that. And recognize that in all of that, yes, there's the physical manifestation, and there's the physical effort, but there's also the non-physical presence as well. So as you have this relationship with you on a non-physical level, who heals from being a person who's been abused and traumatized, that connection's 
pretty amazing with yourself. Now you've interacted with the evils, the evil energies, as you could say. But now consider what it would mean for you to interact with the goods and the process of love and the process of compassion and the process of creative experiences inside you emotionally that create visualizations that are amazing, that create emotions inside of you that are also physically based. And that, that that's all manifested through thought. And thought is not physical. We can't locate thought in the brain, but we can see where a thought is associated to spots in the brain and how thoughts impact the whole body. So then there's this beautiful interaction of the mind, body, spirit connection, right? We are all of it connected. But if you leave out your spiritual awareness of yourself and how your spiritual powers may be present to impact everything, you're going to miss out on one of the amazing interfaces in this complex integration called you. So now you need to kind of walk that path of, I am a spiritual being. What does that mean? Secondly, if I have power on a spiritual level to influence what is spiritual and also to influence what is material, how do I do that? And how do I do it for good and creativity and for health and positivity? How do I create using the additional spiritual tools that are available to me? New set of power tools, right? And I'll leave it at that for now. See you in the next class.